<laughs> Hi, good morning. It's Mark Owen from Moose Marketing NPR. Welcome to Punchline Talks, the business breakfast briefers, the final one of the year. And as you can see, we're all in very festive mode. So we've got a special Christmas uh, edition today, but let me introduce you to the panel. We've got Laurie Bell, CEO of the Chapman Trust, Neil Ricketts, CEO of Asarian, Ian Mean, Director of Business West, Ex-Director of Citizen Echo, Western Daily Press, and Sam Holiday, Business Development Manager for the Federation of Small Business and the Universe. Welcome guys to Punchline Talks, this very special Christmas edition. Thanks ever so much, Santas. Right, let's just whip through the paper, shall we? So we'll start off with the Citizen newspaper. Uh, like show support for boy with cancer. The Western Daily Press, murder probe in city after boy 16 stabbed to death. Terribly sad, a terribly sad story. The Times, Sunak in talks on bailout for pubs and restaurants. The Daily Telegraph, Archbishop appeals for honesty in the public eye, says Church. Hmm. Moving swiftly on. The Guardian, Sunak forced to return to UK for crisis talks from Omicron surge. The Daily Mail, Tories turn on witty. The I, UK shuts down to save Christmas. The Mirror, cops quiz party pair. The Sun, I love this one by the way. It's beginning to look like a lock like Christmas. Okay, that took me a while to practice that one. And uh, the Daily Star, Mother of Plod. It's a bit of a plod, a plot all about line of duty. And anyway, I can't really be bothered to explain. It's all too much for me. Right, let's get on with the show. Uh, Sam, what have you picked out for the papers, please, sir? Well, I mean, I got I got the, the Times and the and the Eye. It's interesting looking at the others because it's, it's it's the same where we are. I, I bet when you set up this, you thought this would be a nice, relaxing last Friday before Christmas, all talking jolly stories about who's going to be the Christmas number one. Nothing like that at all, is it? I mean, it's very it's it's actually very depressing. It also feels a bit um, déjà vu. Uh, uh, soon I can talk. This, mate. Sorry, yeah. So soon I can talks on bailout for for pubs and restaurants and and what we're hearing i mean i mean particularly where neil is we're, we're right on the border of, of wales in wales their their restrictions are going to be really harder i think i think as of boxing days am i right in thinking that pubs and, and nightclubs are going to be yeah. closing or yeah. uh, and you just think how have we got here again how have we ended up in this situation again and um, because i think throughout the year we've all been monitoring all these stories and it really felt like this was going to be a great christmas for the, for business for everybody and we're back here yeah. again and you know, depending on which paper you read and what, what comments you read, um, it just seems to be getting worse rather than better. And and you know what? There's no respite. You think, oh, I can't cope this anymore. I'll go what, read the sport. You know, United left with seven players as five games are called off. Quarter of it are Premiership players haven't got a vaccine. It's relentless, and it really is difficult because as business owners and people in business. You've got all your own personal issues to deal with on this about when you be able to have granny for Christmas, all that kind of stuff. And then you're thinking, hang on a minute, is my business in trouble again? And that's, you know, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to stay as positive as I can, but it's hard because every morning you put the radio on and you almost think, please, make something's made a difference. Um, and, and, and so the final point on it, Mark, is that the, the fear is that we've had, most of us have had three vaccines now, and and we're still. How many more vaccines are we going to have to have before? You know, it's it's. I just find the whole thing very depressing. And 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 what happened yesterday? You know, the, the, we we as an FSB were in with the, the government talking about what needs to be done, and it's just the whole the whole thing is just so un what we wanted. It's it's déjà vu in the worst possible way. Totally agree. So, and uh, uh, Neil, sorry, Neil. Yeah, happy Christmas, Mark, and happy Christmas there, yeah. yeah, Sam. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I went out, got the papers. I, I don't normally get the papers, to be honest. I don't know if you can see those, but I got all the local papers. I got the, the broadsheet. So let's have, a, let's have a bit of a whistle through this. Uh, biggest concern, rates increase. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is, is the boss calling it a day? Bruce Springsteen sells his music catalogue to Sony for 500 million. Is he, is he saving up for a rainy day? Really interesting story on Hermes and uh, and their abuse. I did have a bit of a, a bit of a Santa rant at an Amazon driver who dropped a parcel off at yeah. the wrong address the other day. Uh, I must have, must 
apologise. Uh, it wasn't particularly great kicking the parcel at them, but um, uh, having tried to give it to them on several occasions, they explained that I don't actually live in Stroud. Um, anyway, uh, COVID, obviously, first time we've gone over 88,000 cases. Uh, it's impacting our business and it's, uh, it's impacting our local communities. I'm trying to do as much as I can, running shop into people that are isolated. I've been in a really, really bad place. Um, then we've got, um, uh, we've got... Um, You're slowing up there, Neil. Thank you. French travel ban, anybody... In now, Neil, you're slowing up. There's something wrong with your French there. I've, I've got to move you over to Ian, mate. I can't hear you very well. So, Ian, we'll, we'll, we'll step in for Neil for a second as he's uh, he's dried up, thank goodness. Ian, what stories have you picked up for us? Right, Mark. Well, this is a this is really a big news day, and uh, obviously the early editions didn't take in the North Shropshire by-election. That actually is the big breaking story today. And we've just seen the chairman of the Tory party on TV and just watching Sky actually use the words we were hammered and they were. And the big question now is, and this is the papers tomorrow, uh, Boris's position, is he going to survive? So that's uh, that's there. Uh, you mentioned the sun earlier. That's a great front page in the tradition of the sun. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And that's what we're thinking of, isn't it, at the moment? And here in Gloucestershire, hospitality is in a, a, a pretty bad state. And Sunak in the Times, Sunak in talks on bailout for pubs and restaurants. He was in California uh, on business, apparently. And he's had to fly back uh, to face all this. And... As Sam says, the British Chambers of Commerce, which we're part of, we're all at the table here saying you certainly have to give hospitality some help. Um, stories around this morning basically uh, all saying, uh, looking at the times here, hospitality under lockdown in all but name, huge cancellations. So, you know, big story there. Um, on, a, on a lighter touch, um, some interesting pictures of uh, Boris's new daughter, Romy Iris Charlotte Johnson. Uh, so he's got something to smile about today, but not a lot. Um, as an Arsenal supporter, I was quite interested in the Sun story. Uh, burger's going to cost you. It's burger and chips at the Emirates, £18 and five pence. Now, that seems pretty hefty to me. Uh, it's pretty hefty to get in there as well. Last time I went, the tickets were about 99 quid, and that was a couple of years ago. And just sort of rounding off in the mail, White Christmas on the cards. I was once told by an old news editor on the Daily Mail, Ian, if it's a quiet day, write about the weather. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. We all love a weather story. So White Christmas on the cards. Okay, good way to wrap that up here. Thanks so much. Laurie, what have you picked out for us, please? Gosh, well, I've been watching all the news channels because um, unlike all of you early birds, I haven't been out and got all the papers. So um, the top story, um, as Ian has just said, is all about the North Shropshire seat, which I think is going to be quite interesting as to how that how that actually pans out after, as, as Ian says, the, the weekend papers and then the future for Boris, really, because I think there is a concerted campaign now. And there's no doubt that there's been in, somebody inside who's deliberately dropping out all of these pictures of the parties last year and what's been going on. And if you watch it, it is like a campaign that's happening now, which we've seen many, many times before in all sorts of political parties. But I think this one's going to be quite interesting because the Conservatives are taking the view if, um, you know, this morning they were talking about they're looking at the whole country and the rollout of the vaccinations. 
and that the Lib Dems that have won the seat in North Shropshire, a bit like Cheltenham, will be looking very much at localised issues. And it's how voters will go for the future. Will they go back into their local communities and say what's best for us? Or will they keep that helicopter view across the country? And have it, having been in local government, I'm not, obviously not now, but having been in local government for many, many years, it's always these interesting dynamics as to what makes people vote locally. But when they go to the national polls, quite often they'll go completely different. So I think we're in for interesting times ahead, actually. I really do. Um, I think the other thing that's emerging, as, as I think Ian and Sam both said, is the, the restrictions coming out in Wales, which gives us an indication of probably what we're going to face pretty damn soon. I think Sunak coming back, he's coming back because he knows that the businesses can't survive at the moment. Hospitality is just being shot. I went to Bath on Tuesday on a girl's day out, which was absolutely fantastic to go for lunch at the Ivy. We went to the park and ride. We met there and you could count the cars in the park and ride. Oh, we thought gosh. it was closed. We actually drove in to the one at Lansdowne next to the race course. And we actually thought it was closed. We thought, oh, my goodness, they haven't opened it. It's, it's closed down. You could honestly count. We were literally, there was only about 12 cars in that whole car park. And then is that Bath? Then we went, when we went into Bath, we were walking down the high street. There was no Christmas atmosphere. It was, you could count the pedestrians, the shops, some shops were the only people in there. We booked to go into the Ivy and we got, we, we got in no problem. But when we got in there, there was lots and lots of free tables. And, you know, that's not what this time of the year is about. Um, it, it was quite sad. And we drove out of Bath. We left early thinking, oh, my goodness, we'll get gridlocked in the traffic sailed out absolutely sailed out i think it's really sad times i think things are it does feel deja vu sam you're absolutely right feels very much like last christmas i mean the only difference is is last christmas we were only allowed outdoors there was nothing inside you could only have limited family connections over christmas but i think that's going to come um literally straight after new year i think we're going to be back to that so i think there's lots of stories that you've covered but for me those are the biggest headlines coming out as to what's going to happen politically across the country over the next few months? And then secondly, what's going to happen with the COVID and the restrictions that we're all going to have and the impact it's going to have on us again and the economy of Cheltenham? Now, it's funny, I was in Gloucester at half past five, uh, uh, you know, Christmas shopping, and it was very empty. Uh, but nothing's new there at half past five in Gloucester, unfortunately. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has changed. But it's funny that you mentioned Bath because I don't know if you know, mm. Laurie, uh, Sam and I both work for the Bath Chronicle at different times. We know it very well, and that place is normally absolutely oh, grand. I would have there's dreamed of going here. that place. Sorry, there's a story here in the Daily Mail, double page spread about mm. the, uh, the demise of the hospitality trade. You're right, Sunak is back. I just want to pick out a story that caught my eye. I had the burger story in, but something that appeared in the sun, which is really, really disturbing. And I don't want to put a down on but this is a calendar that's been created. It's a, it's a, sorry, a colouring book of serial killers. I actually had that one, Mark. Mon monsters, monsters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what is wrong with the right book? Right, 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 right. You can colour in, you can colour in Rose West, Myra Hindley, Ian Brady, uh, Fred West. Some person out there think that this is acceptable. So sick. Sick world. Absolutely. Anyway, let's move on. Let's talk something positive. Uh, we're going to change the change the show this time, as is, as it's the Christmas thing. Um, we're going to pick out first of all the story that caught your eye in this week's punchline. Then we're going to go on to the story that caught your eye for the year from the punchline. And then finally, what's the top three businesses you guys have picked out? So let's start with you, Sam. As we start to you first, what's the story this week in Punch, please, mate? Well, it's a story, but I think it was more the, the impact of the video. I, I really liked your walk around Five Valleys with um, uh, with David Jones. I mean, I went there a couple of weeks ago and I was absolutely bowled over by it. And I thought it's fantastic. And uh, bizarrely, it might well make my top three businesses as a result, because I just think it's got something about it. And because it combines both small businesses and this big business concept, because that little marketplace is, is brilliant. And I love that video because I remember the first time you went and showed a video there, you went into one shop, and I did go in it when I visited, where I, really, I thought I could not afford a single thing in it. You'll know which one I mean. Yeah. But I went in there, and I, honestly, I sort of picked up this jacket. I said to my wife, that looks really nice. And I thought, hang on, it's got the, an extra zero on it. There must be a problem. I'll go, no, no extra zero. That's how much it costs. 
But there is a great video, and I like David Jones's enthusiasm for all things retail. And so I really enjoyed watching it and reading about it. Well, thanks very much. That's very kind of you. Neil, what have you picked out for this week's punchline, please? Uh, this week's stories. Uh, it's really about regeneration and, uh, you know, all the great stories that have happened. Um, the university campus at Debenhams, you know, bringing something out of the, uh, the embers of what was destroyed previously. You know, I think that's a, a great project for the town centre. And with everything else going on there, I think it will be a, be, a, be a bit of a hub in the centre. I think, you know, the high street has to reinvent itself. You know, I, I think shopping is now a, a hobby. It's not, you know, it's a social activity, go and maybe have a drink and something to eat and, you know, and do a bit of shopping rather than it necessarily being a function because we do a lot of that online. But, you know, a brave move from the university, something different, which I like to see. And uh, good luck to them. That's what I would say. OK, great stuff. Ian, what's caught your eye this week? Yeah, week? two things. Uh, one, I echo uh, Sam about the video. It's Mark Dransfield, who's put something like £25 million into the Five Valleys. He's also building a medical centre there. So I thought that video was uh, really good. And the other thing was what I liked all week is the way you've been interspersing Christmas stories. You know, websites, newspapers are full of quite gloomy news generally. And I really like how you've tried to uh, big up the people who are doing something for the community. Thanks, Ian. That's very kind of you. Thanks very much. Uh, Laurie, what have you picked out for us, please? Yeah, the one that's close to my heart, which you would understand why, is your interview with um, Tom Kerridge, where he's actually saying that if the government doesn't do something soon, all the restaurants are going to crumble, which they clearly are. Um, being in hospitality, I mean, our whole business has been repurposed into cafe culture. And at the moment, you know, we were expecting our cafes to be absolutely rammed. They are really busy, don't get me wrong but they could be busier. And I do think that come um, January, February, it's just going to be like a ghost town. So I think something has to happen because the economy at the moment isn't boosted by shops. It's not. I mean, even the Christmas shopping we've just talked about, people aren't out there. They're not doing shopping. It's very, it, it's very quiet. And I think if they're going into... Uh, town centres at the moment, they're going for coffee, they're going for other forms of cultural entertainment. I think shopping is almost a byproduct now. And I think the restaurants and the cafes and the bars are really, really going to struggle. So that story hit home. If somebody like Tom Kerridge can pick up the baton and re really shout about what's needed, then great stuff, because I think hospitality is going to be um, hardest hit again. And the worst thing of all, they don't make their money now. Which is exactly a time. That's it. not going to be here yeah. in January, February. This year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. A quarter of all business takings are the Christmas period. That that literally that one month run up and that Christmas week. I mean, we're really at the moment, we were banking on in recovery year, the Christmas period for us being the first time we've actually got the cafes now undercover properly with the orangeries and also our venues open. We were banking on this to really, really get us back to sort of normal. Um, and and it's not happening and people are cancelling we had I mean it's no surprise but the um, in the town hall we host great big Christmas parties and the biggest one we had scheduled was the NHS and of course they've got to cancel it's absolutely right that they cancel but that's a big impact on us you know and we've had a couple of other big companies cancel because they just feel it's not appropriate and whilst that's we totally understand and we approve that and it's ethically right it's also really really difficult for us in terms of our income and all the staff that we have ready to go and all the, all the food that we've ordered in for it. I was going to say, that's I'm... the thing, isn't it? All the food. What are they going to do? Yeah. If you've got a restaurant or a pub, this stuff goes off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a shop yeah. Just goes straight in the bin. Sorry, Neil. Yeah. It just goes straight in the bin, doesn't it? I mean, uh, yeah. one of the stories I was going to going to bring up before um, before my, uh, one of our little boys went on YouTube and screwed the uh, the internet up was uh, mental health, it's huge, isn't it? I mean, we're going, I mean, it, it's like we've got the, the real life Grinch here, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best to make this as, as good a Christmas as everybody. There's stock shortages. We can't get hold of the things that we normally get hold of. If you're a kid, you're gonna be, you know, there's gonna be a lot of disappointed kids not getting what they would really like uh, for a whole range of reasons. You know, people are struggling. Uh, you know, we, we've, got, we've got to come together as a community because 
Uh, there are people stuck at home who are isolating. They can't. Uh, they can't feed their animals. They they can't look after their kids. You know, th this is the time to come together. The problem we have, and it's a bit like the help for businesses, is how much help can we keep on giving? You know, I don't know about everybody yeah. else. I'm absolutely shattered. I'm trying to run a business. I'm trying to help in the community. I'm trying to look after my kids. You know, sometimes I don't. I can't even remember the last time I felt well. You know, we've had four vaccines actually, Sam. If you include oh. the flu, the flu yeah, jab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, they do take their toll. They, they, there's no doubt that there are side effects. I, I suffered from Bell's palsy as a result of uh, the first vaccine. And there's a lot of challenges out there. And and I think it's down to the communities now to actually say we're going to need to look at Christmas in a slightly different way. And um, and accept that it's going to be different. No, totally, totally. Uh, the story that caught my eye actually this week, thanks ever so much for this lo lovely comments about the video and everything else, was actually the Gloucester Triangle and the missing section of the Gloucester Triangle, 300 new houses there. Ian and I were both involved with the Urban Regeneration Company in uh, 2006, wasn't it? And uh, Ian was vice chairman of it, so I know he knows it very, very well. <coughs> as I do. There aren't that many of us left hanging around, Ian, from those days of the Urban Regeneration Company. Uh, we're still hanging in there. Uh, but what it was very, very interesting and what we tried to get across in that story that this part was one of the Magnificent Seven and uh, it was always going to be extremely challenging. The fact that Morrisons went in there, you know, rolled the dice and went in there years and years ago. Then you had the Mercedes garage and you got a business park, you got Costa Coffee. And this bit runs by the um, by the opposite the Irish club and along by the other business park oh. as well where Azets is and, and places like that so opposite the actual Gloucester Royal Hospital that's oh. triple land that when you chug along the train opposite the longest platform in the year of the in, in the universe it seems there is that derelict land you know the real wasteland and that's going to be filled up hopefully with some good quality housing so uh oh, that's the story for me that really caught my eye this week anyway let's quickly move on we're going to change what we normally do now we're going to have a look at the story that grabbed your eye for the year guys which is the number one thing yeah that your eye for the year so i'm going to start with you ian what's the story of the year for you locally uh for the business story right punchline i'm interested in exclusive stories your best story of the year was the sale of uh, the keys by Peel, without a doubt. You scooped everyone. It's a big story. It's ongoing. They've actually taken the keys off the market now. Uh, but it's Peel looking at, uh, you know, actually selling off all their big centres, uh, looking at uh, an, an whole thing of asset management. But I thought you did really well there. And that's the story that gets people talking. Yeah, thanks ever so much, Ian. Uh, Sam, what's the story that caught your eye from this week's... This well, to be year? honest, it's, it's a, uh, over the year, uh, I think Neil's kind of stole my thunder a little bit because I just think reading about the transformation of Gloucester is fascinating for me. Because as, as some of you know, I came to Gloucester about 10 years ago. And it already feels like a totally different city to me. It feels like... When I, I think I might have come at the best possible time because I've actually seen it grow through the keys mm. and everything. And what we're seeing in the city centre and the, the university thing is stunning. You wouldn't believe the amount of people outside the county I've told about this, you know, <clears throat> and people talk about what can we do with these big stores that nobody wants anymore? I said, look at what's happening in Gloucester. They're turning right in the middle of the set, which will bring so much vitality to that area. And you'll have businesses that support students and young cultural life and building around it. And I think... Um, Whereas Cheltenham's obviously had a very good cultural offering. Gloucester has lagged behind, I think. But when you've got like a university campus, which creates a certain buzz in the city centre, and you've got music works, it's going to be there and various other things. I think, I think the transformation of Gloucester, which is like an almost an ongoing weekly story I read about in Punchline, has been remarkable. I think it's, uh, it's had a great year. Gloucester's had a great year. Thanks very much, Sam. Neil? I was going to say the same as Sam about regeneration. I think there's been some great stories about that, but um, probably uh, the developments that are, that are also going on, you know, uh, there's huge amounts of work being done at Hartbury, for instance. Uh, and I think, you know, the way that they've developed yeah. their rugby, uh, which has supported the university and the university supporting the rugby has been a, a, a great win for the area. Um, and, you know, they're going to be challenging Gloucester at some stage, I think, you know, and uh, I think that's great. I think, um, you know, 
Uh, the biggest story for me, though, was uh, how the NHS kind of mobilised the vaccine, and um, uh, and you know we led the world in that. There's no doubt. But I know the government take a lot of uh, a lot of stick, uh, but you know we did achieve the the best results in in terms wow. of vaccine in the world, and um, I, th I think and that's, a, that's a great success. Yeah, yeah. Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire led that. They were yeah, yeah. recognised as the as the best in the world. You know, uh, best yeah. in the UK. Yeah, it just goes to show that when we do want to do something, we can still do it and we can still do a really good job. And I think in a, a lot of times when we're talking about really bad stories, we forget about all the really good stories and the way that Gloucester Royal and Cheltenham Royal and, and the other hospitals and the doctors and everybody, uh, you know, the nurses, the technicians, everybody came, came together was just awesome, to be honest. And, yeah, we owe them a huge debt. Totally, Neil, totally. So heart rate and the NHS roll out of the vaccine are your two top stories then. OK, Laurie, what's, uh, what caught your eye this year's punch, please? So I'm not going to talk about great big regeneration projects or how Gloucester's transforming. I'm going to talk about something that I think the only female on this this morning could talk about. And the quirkiest story I think you published was back in July, and you probably can't even remember it now. And it was about how after lockdown, the sales of lipstick went through the roof and they're destined to happen again because all the women were wearing masks so they couldn't okay. wear lipstick the minute the restrictions were lifted in July lipsticks you couldn't get hold of it you could not get lipstick for love nor money and it'll be the same I bet you if we go back now because everybody's mask wearing again it'll be the surge in lipsticks now I know none of you guys would probably even be aware of that but for a woman to not be able to put your lipstick on and show your lipstick particularly at this time in the morning is a really really difficult thing so for me that story was the quirkiest one I could find and one that I thought was quite apt to the only female on the show well, well, you know, don't you get my my sort of rosy <laughs> rosy lips? Uh, you know, Neil's looking very go there, Mark. at the moment. Mark, Mark, Mark has had several. I can assure you, uh, Laurie, that Mark has had several different colours over the year. And, uh, and he's now on his lip balm at the moment because yeah. obviously winter's yeah. here. But um, he is he an avid. Yeah, he's got a massive collection, to be honest, yeah. sorry. It's, You've uh, got to watch the show a bit more, Laurie. Uh, uh, no, thank you for that. We, I, I thought it was, I, I do remember the story very well, by the way. And uh, yeah, no, it really caught my eye, that particular story as well, and really resonated. Um, so, no, thank you. Thank you for recognising that. A couple of stories that I picked out, really. Um, you are right, uh, Ian Peel I had down as well, and um, but the one that really so, sort of uh, stuck out was, uh, oh, there was the King's Home as well, buying the ground next door. I thought that was fantastic. But for me, it had to be Debenhams. It came out of nowhere. It was a real left field kind of story. We weren't expecting it. They'd kept it very, very quiet. Um, you know, I'd like to think we've got our ear to the ground and lots of things. As you know, we talked to lots and lots of people and pieces jigsaw pieces together and uh, that really came out of nowhere and uh, and I think it's a great going to be a great asset for the city and 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 also rolling in we saw the first lot of designs we put on our website and if you if you look at it by the way I don't know if anyone's had the time but there is actually some big graphics there of 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 diagrams of individual rooms that you can actually zoom in as well. And, and when you look at that, you know, got wards and stuff they're going to create there. So that was a story for me. Anyway, let's move on, come to the final bit of the show. We're going to pick out the top three businesses. It's just on a bit of a point there, Mark, just Sorry. before we start the, the, the final part of this. Uh, a, a, a pro cook, not now, what your favourite company, given that you've, you seem to have hacked the end of your finger off? Well, it's true, I did hack that. <laughs> It's because I wanted to do that to you, mate. Um, and um, it's a family that's, called, show. that's called karma, Mark. You know all about karma, don't you? I, I do, I do. My wife said, "Look, please don't order any more knives." She said, "But how about just some sauce?" It's, it's, it's a good job you haven't got any experience no. in using knives before. We haven't even had a story about how you 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 fed the SAS. <laughs> I know I tell the story about how I fed the SAS and uh, and tornado. And we should violence. we should also <laughs> hold a, a few minutes silence here for the burgundy waistcoat, which seems to have disappeared. So you know, if we could just uh, just have a minute silence, that'd be just fantastic. Although I'm not sure that's going to work with Ian. But... No, thank you very thank you very much. Right, moving on. We got 
the top three businesses that you guys have picked out this year. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to start with Laurie this time. So Laurie, what have you picked out, please? Now you've got. You should have. We've all got an envelope. You all hold up your envelope, please, where you put in your number one business. Okay, so Laurie, give us. Start with the third, third choice first, please. Okay, so I've been a little bit um, liberal with this and gone with organisations rather than pure businesses. And the reason for that is because um, local government and local authorities quite often get a hell of a pasting. They don't get a lot of accolades. And actually, I would like to actually nominate Cheltenham Borough Council because I think in many ways they've um, been really supportive of the economy of Cheltenham. I think they've relaxed restrictions to allow people to remobilise from COVID, particularly last June, and I think they've supported that throughout. I think a lot of places haven't done the same. I think they've also, I mean, they've, they've got lots of things that I know we, we, we can hammer them for, but there's a lot of things that I think people don't praise them for. And I think, you know, all their move to bring in Cyber Central and how they're regenerating a lot of Cheltenham Town Centre, including um, the whole Imperial Gardens with the new quadrangle. They're also now looking at the whole Minster Exchange and really transforming that really grotty area, um, you know, and putting in a brand new innovation park and turning that into a sort of creative cultural quarter i think it's just great i think the future that they're, they're really driving um some of the bigger issues which often a local authority will only deal with the smaller issues and i think they need some accolade and praise for that so whilst they're not a business i i feel somebody should stand up and say that i think they're doing some good stuff we did actually um, write, we did actually write that actually we, we've written a number of stories and um yeah that you have the first they were the first borough council to to start paying out the grants. They, they were did. The mark and they did it out yeah. of their own money. Okay, just so number two then. Shall we do? A, shall we all do third third ones first? If that makes okay. sense. Sam, who's your third? Well, you. I've got to have one small business in, and I and I will do because the other two probably aren't considered small businesses. But I, I just want to give a big up to my favourite cafe in Gloucester, which is Cafe Coretto. Because I think Cafe Coretto is a, is a wonderful place near the Keys. Mark has seen me there on occasions because it, it embraces like the coffee, the, the cafe culture that we talked about where you're sitting outside. Um, it, it seems to represent, whenever I'm there, I never hear the same accent twice. It seems to be everybody from different countries goes there. It's a wonderful community. It's, it's, I just think it's a great little cafe in it. And it's, it's probably what Gloucester would like to aspire to in the future in that it's oh. got, it's got, it's, it, it feels, it, it looks out in the world. It's outdoor key. It's just a great place. So Cafe Coretto in Gloucester, my third favourite business of the year. And I'll tell you what, mate, it's a nice pint there. And I've seen you there yeah. lots and lots of times. I've enjoyed it on occasion. <laughs> uh, Ian, your third, please. Your my third, third Mark. Uh, great local building contractor, E.G. Carter, doing brilliant work on King's Square. If you look at the uh, diagrams that have just come out there, um, I've worked with them over many years because they're really uh, interested in apprentices. Uh, in fact, the two sons uh, have taken over the firm now and uh, Michael Carter has become chairman. What I love about them is that they encourage young people. You know, they're one of the uh, largest employers of young people in terms of apprenticeships. When I talked to Michael yesterday, he said something to me which resonated. I said, what's the secret of your success, Michael? And he said, we think we're a constant in a changing world. I think that's pretty good. What it's all about, quality service. And I tell you what, King Square is starting to look really, yeah. good. really, really yeah. good. Quite exciting. Thanks very much for that, Neil. So EG Carter is your third place. Neil, what's yours, please? So uh, I went with uh, Simon at Allstone. And the reason I went with Simon at Allstone is because um, he's, he's a good panellist. It's good fun. Uh, but his business is absolutely super stellar. It's not until you start looking that you realise how many speedy skips are out there. And the real thing for me is his commitment to recycling and making sure that we reduce the impact on, on the environment. 
uh, you know, a lot of this stuff used to go to landfill. They're now sorting it. They're trying to get uh, extra uses. And I think, you know, a real good use of, of that material and hopefully, you know, get to work with Simon on this is using that, uh, the, the recycled aggregate in 3D printed houses, which is uh, the big news story for next year. And I'll tell you what, the, um, they're also doing the, the uh, big... Uh, um, get it out, Mark. Come on, get it. Go. It's advent calendar. Thank yes. you very much. They're given an advent calendar. We open the box and it's basically £500 every single day to a different charity. Thank you. I managed to spit it out in the end. Okay, so let me just recap. Laurie is going to be Cheltenham Council. Sam is Cafe Gretto. Ian is EG Carter. And Neil is Allstones. And my third place, which I did write down, I can't bloody remember now. Um, I did have, first of all, Spirex Sarco because of the defibrillators in Cheltenham. I thought donating 10 defibrillators was pretty good. But if, I'm actually going to give it to you, Neil. Oh. Uh, I think Vesarian this year, I don't want to brown nose or anything, um, it's absolutely amazing. You're working with concrete, you got into clothing. You're in with the, you know, it's just absolutely brilliant and very, very exciting as well. I would have given you second or first slot if you'd made a profit. Or we'd given you something. <laughs> given Next year, we'll give you a house, <laughs> I, was waiting, right? I was waiting for my truck. I, mean, I, can't, I can't compete with two streets in Cheltenham from lorry or, you know. I was waiting for my <laughs> free masks. I was waiting for my free mask to arrive and they haven't. So i have relegated to third place. But no, congratulations. They are available on the website, Mark. Cesareanproducts.co.uk. I'm going to have to pay for them. I don't want to pay for them. Yeah, you have to um, get your card out, Miss Wallet. At least you can't cut <laughs> your fingers off with a face mask. Listen, mate, just take the accolade. Third place. Brilliant, congratulations. And also the link was super dry. Link was super dry. Absolutely. I think it's super Very exciting, mate. Uh, Very and it was great to see you on that night as well. Okay, let's go to second place then. Second place, I'm gonna move it around slightly. So I'm gonna start with you, Sam. In second place, who have we got? Well, actually, I would have thought, I, I've got to say this, I think Punchline in this area, and I, I haven't included you, but you're a given as far as I'm concerned, because you're both, in your own way, you may not agree with this, but you're both incredibly innovative. And you've both entered markets and been disruptors to a certain extent because you brought something different to that marketplace. And, you, and throughout the year, you've constantly surprised us. So I think you're both in there, but I, yeah. I can't include you. And I, and I haven't mentioned it, obviously. Do you know what? The second place is a bit of a strange one, but um, it's, you know, I'm a big sports fan. And, all, and like most of you guys, I think mine's a ramble. Um, and I think the, the business of football in Gloucestershire has had a fantastic year. I mean, Cheltenham Town got promoted. They had that wonderful FA Cup run where they played Manchester City. Um, Gloucester returned to Gloucester, which is fantastic oh, yeah. news for the city. Really pleased about that. And also, Forest Green Rovers, as well as doing really well on the pitch, they continue to influence everybody with their green credentials. Um, what they do, you hardly ever pick up a, a, a paper these days without Forest Green being in the news section, let alone the sports section. And it brings so much attention to ecotricity. We know what they're doing there, by the way. But I think what Forest Green have done both on the pitch and off the pitch has been trailblazing. So in a, in a, in a county so dominated by rugby, it has been a fantastic year for sport in Gloucester. In Gloucestershire and sport is a big business and that will have brought a lot of money to the county. So Big up to Cheltenham Town, Forest Green Rovers and Gloucester City. That's my second business of the year. OK, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sam, right, we're going to go to you, Ian. Your second business of the year. My second business is Renishaw, one of our great companies. In the first quarter, uh, their revenues are up something like 35%, just under 42 million. They're now globally employing 5,000 people two and a half thousand uh, in this country and they're they're a constant as well this is a a county mark where the jet engine first flew they've got fantastic credentials uh specialist engineering manufacturing still our biggest business this year they're taking on 80 apprentices and 96 graduates so they are also a worldwide player over 80% of their revenues uh, are outside this country, probably more than that now. So uh, they're my number two. And a great ethical company. They didn't want to sell it to anybody. They wanted to protect their work. Absolutely. And, and here in the UK and particularly Gloucestershire, totally agreeing. Great company. Okay, thanks ever so much. So it goes to uh, Neil next. Neil, 
What's your so um, kind of connected with the super dry story because they provide uh, a, a lot of their uh, cosmetics and stuff like that. Uh, local hero SLG. I don't know. They seem to be in the background. Uh, Mars mm. is doing a fantastic job. Uh, again, dominating the world in the field that they are signing big names, getting uh, you know getting all of those things in a, in a line. Uh, amazing company, done amazing things. N not one of the ones that generally hits the headlines, uh, but um, a, a real local hero. I totally agree. Lovely guy as well. He's on the big interview. If anybody saw that, watched that. Um, really interesting uh, guy in background and um, just just a fantastic company led by a great leader. Thanks very much. And great product. You know, it's got, a, got the whole package there, isn't it, really? Okay, yep. thanks very much. So, Laurie, what's your second so my second one's a little bit different. Um, I've picked Randall and Payne. And I think, you know, most people think accountants and auditors, they're usually companies in the background, they're slightly dull, but I take my hat off to Randall and Payne because they've come out really large on profile and they sponsor all the big business awards. They support local businesses. They do a huge amount of charity. They're forever releasing quirky videos and things that are very different. And I think I just take my hat off to them that for a, a company that's often not what you would expect to be in the limelight, they seem to get their profiling quite right. And I, and I think that's really, really good for an accountant and auditor. And I know that they take on um, a lot of big, hefty sponsorship and, um, you know, um, Punchline don't do sponsored awards. I think you should um, personally. But, um, you know, other, others do, and um, certainly Gloss Live, can I say that on this one? Um, you know, Randall and Payne are behind all of that. And I think it's really, really good for companies and businesses to be able to go in for all of these awards and to showcase, not just from the point of view of profiling themselves, but also for the business-to-business -business connections. Because when I come on to my company that I've chosen as the, the top one, we met those through the awards, uh, through Randall and Payne, and we now collaboratively work together, which I'll come on to. And that wouldn't have happened without a company like that, that, that believes in that connectivity. So, yeah, I think they're a bit different, but I, I, I think they've done some really good stuff. Totally agree there as well. And lovely people, lovely people. Yeah, they are. Got, they're they're, they're, they're great. Laugh. You've got yeah. to laugh at that crazy friends video yeah. where they actually jumped in their pond and the guy looks so bloody frozen. <laughs> Great stuff. And Tim, Tim Watkins as well. Yeah. Lovely guy. Oh, they're all lovely, actually, to be very good. Uh, yeah, really, yeah. really good. They're coach. also they're our auditors, so um, but we pick them because of the profile they have. No, without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, my number two, my number two was actually Axel, uh, based in Cinderford, the new company obviously just opened. <laughs> Those guys, their marketing, the, the way that they've conducted themselves, the way they built that, it's a new concept, the first of its type in the UK to build mm. construction, to try and get more women into the construction industry, uh, trying to get young people trained properly in the construction industry and try and readjust it really. And I think, again, they are just really, really an exciting mm. company. And I love the fact that they did it in Cinderford. It could have perhaps done. I know their, their office is opposite as well. They probably had that land. I don't know. But whatever it was, they stuck to the guns. They built it in Cinderford. And um, uh, and from it, they'll they'll regenerate the other area. I can just see it happening. So and they're, they're talking apparently to other places to do these, you know, if it works, yeah. they could do it in other cities. I mean in the UK, definitely. In the UK. Fantastic. And 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 not being funny here, led by women, helping other women. To get into the construction industry uh, absolutely inspirational so that's my second okay let's move into the, the final slot you've all got your envelopes so well well working my way through this then it is actually starting with ian this time so ian who is your business of the year sir right now my business of the year is our biggest employer and it is a business, although an organisation, Gloucestershire Hospitals NHS Trust. They employ 10,000 people. Uh, they've got a budget of something like uh, 650 million. They have been amazing in the last year and continue to be so. I'm very involved with uh, 
the NHS in terms of organ donation. We don't really realise that this is an amazing business, the NHS. It's mm. the biggest business in the UK. We see it as an organisation, but actually it's an amazing business. And where would we be without them at this moment? Well, they saved my life twice. So uh, I can't say any more than that, really. So, no, thank you very much, Ian. OK, who's next? It's going to be um, it's going to be Laurie. Laurie, who's your number one business of the year, please? OK, I've gone for a much smaller company that maybe some of you won't have heard of. I'll put it up on there. I don't know if you can see it. It's a company called Fire and Flow. They're based in Cheltenham. They won the independent, most innovative uh, business of the year. And they actually are coffee, ethical coffee suppliers. And um, as, as a business that is completely repurposed into cafes, and that's been our mainstay in keeping us solvent and keeping us um, going and basically helping the mental health of the whole community of Cheltenham. Because in the first year, we had three quarters of a million people visit our two cafes over, over that lockdown period. Oh. And Fire and Flow, we were introduced to um, through Randall and Payne, through the awards, and they now supply all our coffee. And they are amazing. And they can't believe how great it is to be connected now where they're in cafes right next to heritage buildings, particularly, obviously, the popular Pump Room Cafe. So for me, they're a great company. They're very small. They're finding their feet. But boy, are they going to go places. So for me, um, th they're very different. I take my hat off to you, Ian, with the NHS. I totally agree. I've just gone for something very different and very local and, and, and that mm. support because in these tough times, you know, people that have repurposed and launched new businesses and found a new niche and have gone for it, then I really admire that because it's probably the most challenging and toughest time to do this. Okay. Fire and flow, fantastic. Thanks very much, Laurie. Number two. All right, okay, Neil, it's you, sir. What is your number one business for the year? Got my envelope here. Just open it up. Uh, so I went with, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, Ecotricity. So uh, for me, it's uh, personified by this, uh, by this quote. Uh, first, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. And I think for Dale, that's the the story of his journey. I think uh, ten years ago, when he was talking about renewable energy, everybody was like, "Oh, that's a rubbish idea." And when we were talking about, you know, football clubs going vegan, that was a rubbish idea, and it'll never catch on. Uh, you know, some of the stuff he's done has been quite out there, uh, making diamonds from the sky, for instance. But you know. What, what a great character. And actually, do you know what? We need more of these people to challenge the way we do things. You know, it started off as a small business and has grown in the county. Uh, it, you know, it, it's not a popular thing that he's been saying over the years, but he's kept at it. And, and I've got, you know, fair play. Hats off to the man. You know, uh, what a great way That's to build a business. Like. And keep, keep real with your... Uh, with your um, with, with your, you know, your hopes and your dreams and your and your ethos, I think that's that's what we. we, we uh... I love your quote, by the way. Uh, exactly, it's exactly as I feel. For punchline sometimes. Um, I think we all do. I think everybody that's in mm, business. Great. Uh, I remember when I floated my business, and uh, 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 one of my in-laws said, uh, "You know, don't you think you should really get yourself a real job now? You know, having floated a business on the London Stock Exchange. You know." It's, <laughs> No, and but the other thing I, I've and I've said this to uh, Dale Vince, and the nice thing about Dale to be, he's always given Punchline his time. To be honest with you, and that is, you know, uh, you know, really, really appreciated. But I just think he is one of the country's best marketeers. He oh, is, oh. he is just at the top all the time. Innovative, creative. He's just top draw, uh, uh, along with uh, Super Dry, maybe obviously, uh, and along with um, Mars Dunkley, who you said earlier, but Ecotricity, Dale Vince, fantastic. Okay, Sam, to you, sir. I think everybody's talking about Ecotricity, 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 definitely a good shout. Got, got what Ian said was incredible, but I don't know if anyone else was distracted by me, but there was Aussie wickets going on behind you, Ian. So uh, it, your yeah. words are oh. I was watching the Aussie wickets going down as well. Um, <laughs> right, 
Number one, um, I'm not sure Neil will like this off his earlier comment, but I'm going to give it to ProCook. And um, my interest in ProCook, bizarrely, started on this very programme. I actually I actually was on a panel, was it, is it Daniel, I think? Was, it, was, he, was he there? Yeah. And I was fascinated by their story. And I knew a bit about it before, but after that, I got really fascinated by their story. Uh, and to see that they, they've now floated as well. Um, and, and one of the exciting things about ProCook, I think, is that A, I didn't realise it was a Gloucester company, I went, I've been in the shop a couple of times in the key. He's been impressed with what they did, but didn't realize it's got a company. But that should have been exactly the kind of business that really struggled throughout COVID and post COVID. And their figures are astonishing. They really, yeah. really shouldn't have done as well as they did. And they did because that is quality stuff they produce. Um, the image of the store is great. It's got a nice feel to it. Um, and I think it's one of those homegrown successes that the best homegrown successes are ones you don't even realize are homegrown. Um, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a really, really good, strong business that's going to go even further. Because if it, put it this way, if it can survive the last couple of years, it's got a fabulous future. So I don't think any, I think Rennish or Ecotricity, all of the ones we've talked about, everyone are a worthy winner. But for me, I don't know, there's something about ProCook. And I, and I blame you, Mark, for, for being on that show. I've become really interested in that company. And I think they're... They're great, and I, I, I've really been pleased to see how well they've done. So, pro no, they're a, they're a class company. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But do you know yeah. what? With all the doom and gloom and all the things businesses have been through the last two years, it's fantastic that we can name such great companies in the county. Yeah, yeah. You know, this yeah, is. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether they're small or they're big, whether yeah. they're young or whether they're old. This is a really vibrant place for mm. for um, for businesses. And the one thing that uh, I, I guess myself and Ian were probably a, a, a a little bit reticent about saying is obviously you know supported by G First LEP, and yeah. um, you know we've got some great support in the county with uh, you know Sam's FSB and you know it, you know mm. it's it's a fantastic place to 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 do business and to export from. And I'd just like to say I, I meant to say by the way when I talked about you your move to um, the bigger factory in the forest as well by the way that was another reason why I gave you that. Okay, uh, my company of the year. Thank you for that, Sam. Pro Cook was yours. My company of the year, I'll just open that as well. I can't get over that thumb. I know. Uh, my company sausage. of the year also is uh, Pro Cook. Okay. Uh, uh, it is Pro Cook. And the reason uh, for Pro Cook was everything that Sam said that the fact they floated on the stock exchange, 235 million, 700 staff, opened another two stores, opened one store this week, they open another store next week. There are 200 staff based here, 500 actually in the store. They grew the company on the back of the, um, the, um, uh, on the internet. That's really their, their core business was actually on the internet. And then they've opened these other stores. Sales were up 34% and they've done it on the back of really good quality product, really good management, really good um, leadership as well. And Daniel O'Neill, the thing I like about him, he comes on the show, he hasn't changed from the, he's the same guy I met him around six or seven years ago. He talks to us on a regular basis. He doesn't bullshit. He's a nice guy and a great leader. And uh, hats off to ProCook. Anyway, that's my, uh, that's my. Yeah. So going back to the choices this year, I, I totally agree. Ian, from Ian, uh, Gloucestershire NHS Trust. Flow, fire and flow. Uh, Ecotricity. <clears throat> and Sam and myself, Pro Cook. Congratulations, guys. And that's it for this year's edition of Punchline Talks and the Business Breakfast Briefers. It has been 15 in a straight row. I'll be honest with you, I'm looking forward to having a little light in on a Friday. We will be back on Friday the 7th with a, a brand new show. We're going to change the format slightly because I'm always looking to improve things, but we will always have our wonderful guests. And if you have been a guest in the show, I'd just like to thank you ever so much for taking part. It's been absolutely such a fantastic pleasure to meet with you all, to get to know you, to work with you. And I've really enjoyed all your company. And also to our audience, thanks ever so much for watching. If you like the show, please like, share and subscribe. And hopefully have a peaceful, wonderful new year. Thank you, everybody. And good business. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.